Mr. President, is it time to call for a summit between yourself, the president of Mexico, no. the presidents of Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador? No, I don't need a summit. I think we've done very well without the summit. So President Trump rejecting the idea of talks with Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries of Central America over the migrant crisis at our southern border. At least one prominent Democrat, Assistant House Speaker Ben Ray Lujan, disagrees. The United States needs to be working again with Mexico and with the Northern Triangle countries. I think the president threatening to shut down that southern border, cut off the money from the Northern Triangle, which would only encourage more violence in those countries and encourage more people to flee out of fear for their own lives. Let's bring in Bob Wells. He's a retired Navy captain and former national security advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney. OK, what's your take, Captain Wells, to meet or not to meet? I think to not meet. I think the president has uh, really done a, a really good job in elevating this particular issue. I think he's, if you look at what he's actually doing, he's calling attention to our uh, border uh, challenges that the Department of Homeland Security has to manage our Customs and Border Patrol. He's looked at uh, the governance and what's happened in the Central American countries, or as you mentioned, the Northern Triangle countries, and the conditions that these poor people have to live under. under. And then finally, he's put Mexico right in the center of where the, uh, the solution needs to be. He has diplomatic discussions with uh, President Obrador of uh, Mexico. So he's got all three pieces of this in terms of uh, a strategy to get to the next step. I think it's a long-term uh, challenge, but it's got to be a national security solution. I think the president is leading us there. So the U.S.-Mexico relationship, as you well know, um, Captain Wells, is, is codependent in various ways. And Mexico's inability, though, to manage migration and drug trafficking puts a strain on that relationship. So you, start, you sort of uh, started to uh, touch on it, but what leverage should President Trump employ that will really pressure Mexico to get it together? Well, I think he's already signaled that he's going to put uh, the border leverage and the car leverage in terms of the economic leverage. There's other leverage there, which is uh, all part of Mexico's national identity. If you're looking at the problem set itself, Mexico has been challenged for the last decade to actually deal with the illicit uh, networks that are bringing drugs and women and uh, human trafficking to the United States border. Uh, that needs to be uh, resolved in, in Mexico's favor. Uh, Mexico's got the resources. It needs to have additional capability and capacities for law enforcement in order for them to succeed. Uh, they've been challenged through three Mexican presidencies in order to deal with these particular ungoverned areas and illicit trafficking networks by cartels and human trafficking in particular. So working with Mexico more closely, uh, a little bit of imagination like we did possibly with Colombia, with Plan Colombia. Uh, President Bush did it with uh, Merida Initiative. Uh, we can have an Obrador Initiative in some place in Mexico, but not this at this time to have a, a summit of all the Americas. I think solving it, uh, working with Mexico first uh, is a good first step. Yeah, and there, there, are always, uh, there are always risks involved in whatever, you, whatever route you choose. But here, here's another question for you, sir. Should completely shutting down the southern border ever be a, a consideration? I don't think so. I think economically, looking at our trade relationship, as you mentioned, Arthel, uh, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, you can actually do more harm than good. Our supply chains have been uh, intimately involved with Mexico since the NAFTA treaty was passed. Uh, we've just had a new NAFTA treaty. It's still under uh, discussion inside uh, uh, the Congress. So we really need to think about uh, the supply chains and looking at American business so we don't impact our own economy. So we need to think about that with regard to uh, the approach uh, with Mexico on the border. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't recommend it. But it's, I think, the president, in his own style, in his own way, communicating that this is a serious issue. We're going to elevate it. We're going to turn the lights on in the room. And we're going to see where all the furniture is. And that's what he's done through his rhetoric, through his tweets, and how he also leads uh, by putting the issue back right front and center. Uh, should the U.S. continue giving aid to Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala? I think so. And I think uh, I, I'm a big supporter of uh, diplomacy and also development to support uh, helping build the partner capacities in, in nations. Uh, I've been part of that in national security. Uh, in the uh, Bush administration. But I think if you're looking at what we're trying to do with that development aid, it's to actually build law enforcement capacity in Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador. Uh, we need to look at the political economy. Mm -hmm. I also recall Vice President Biden, Biden going down, uh, trying to do the same thing and advocating a billion dollars 
worth of aid uh, in a previous summit attempt with the Central American countries. It, it won't be solved. It's a tough situation there with, this, with these illicit trafficking networks. They're challenging the government authority in these three countries, and in particular, also Mexico, with their transit passage to our border. Yeah, I have to leave it there. I have more questions for you, but we'll have you back again and we'll continue this, this discussion because it's certainly not going away as there really is a crisis that is continuing at our southern border. Thank you very much, Captain Wells. Thank you, Arthel.